So, so depression. Here's some statistics on depression for you, the reality of the world we live in. One in five people experience depression. Uh, these statistics are right, about 121 people uh, worldwide. Suicide is the leading cause of violent death. So we've got deaths from disease, but when it comes to violent death, suicide is leading. 49.1%. Next closest is homicide, uh, murder, 31.3%, and then war, 18.6%. A few things up front about depression. First, there's a range of depression. So you've got low level, less severe depression to more high level, severe, major clinical depression. Um, Regardless of what, you know, on, we're on the spectrum, what we're talking about is a feeling or an experience that an individual has of either intense sadness or, or numbness. Um, it's something that's, that's private or it's personal to you, to your own person, uh, where you, you don't feel happy, you don't feel right, and things feel wrong, that you, you feel off, you feel broken. Here's a good explanation from Elizabeth Wurzel in her book, Prozac Nation. Here's what she says. Depression involves a complete absence of effect, absence of feeling, absence of response, absence of interest. The pain you feel in the course of a major clinical depression is an attempt on nature's part to fill up um, empty space. But for all intents and purposes, the deeply depressed are just the walking, waking dead. Abraham Lincoln, he suffered from depression. He gives a pretty good description. Here's how Abraham Lincoln describes it. I'm sorry, the baby's depressed. Um, uh, just kidding. Hey, you need to lighten it up a little bit, right? Um, Abraham Lincoln says, I am now the most miserable man living. If what I feel were equally distributed to the whole human family, there would not be one cheerful face on earth. Whether or not I shall ever be better, I cannot tell. I awfully forebode. I shall not. That gets it. Uh, depression, it's, it's not only something that, that someone feels, but usually it's accompanied with bodily symptoms, such as sleep deprivation or just sleep excess. Can't get out of bed. Uh, weight fluctuation, uh, digestive problems, loss of appetite, or, or the other end, binge eating. Bodily pain, breathing difficulty, bodily symptoms. Depression inevitably affects a person's behavior. You either uh, stop doing the things that you enjoy or the, and that are good for you, or you, you start doing things that actually end up making you feel worse. So in, in the range of depression, you may feel and experience some of those things for a little while. I mean, everyone feels sad from time to time. Or you may experience a, a lot of those things for a sustained period of time that could last not just many days, but many weeks and, and months, and in some cases, years. Now, the second thing I, I want to make clear is that depression affects everyone regardless of whether or not they are a Christian. Um, this guy David Murray, he wrote, it's like an okay book, it's not my favorite, but called De uh, Christians Get Depressed Too. But the, the point that he makes in it that's good is that there's this, this common assumption that like if if you are a Christian, then, then you should be happy, and, and, and you should be always happy, and, then it, but, and if you're not happy, then, then there's something wrong, and it's probably your fault. Okay. Um, now, different people, they have different temperaments. Um, some people are more prone toward depression than others. That's just how it is. Some people are wired, and that's okay. But in all of that, what, what we must, what must be clear, what we've got to understand is that depression itself is not a sin. Depression is not a sin. Um, sin can result from depression. Sin can cause depression, but depression in and of itself is not a sin. In fact, there are many godly characters and heroes in the Bible um, who experience depression. Guys like Moses. <laughs> Never heard of him. Uh, he, you know, he, after killing a guy, he, he just left all out by himself and just wandered in the desert for a long time, all just by himself. He was so depressed. Elijah, this great prophet of God, after a wonderful sermon and this miraculous sacrifice, got so depressed, he ran away by himself and, and buried himself in a cave. Um, guys like David, who wrote our psalm, Psalm 23, he had a number of episodes of depression, one after sleeping with another man's wife and having him killed. 
another time when one of his grown sons came after him and wanted to kill him so that he could be king. Um, he said in one of his lowest moments, here's what David wrote in Psalm 42, 3, Tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? Other Psalms even says, Where are you, God? Guys like Jeremiah, God, the prophet Jeremiah, actually had him write a whole book on the Bible on sadness and depression called Lamentations. It's in the Bible. Uh, you know what a lament is? A lament is a passionate expression of grief or sorrow that's usually accompanied with wailing or weeping. Lament. Here's one of the, some of the things he says in the book of Lamentations. Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. For these things I weep. My eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me. Oh Lord, I am in distress. My stomach churns. My heart is wrung within me. Gals in the Bible, like Hannah, just cried and cried because she couldn't get pregnant and wanted to have a baby so bad. Gals like the prostitute whom Jesus forgave and just fell at his feet weeping both in gratitude and pain for all the years of hardship that she had given her body to. Guys like the Apostle Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament in our Bible. It says this in 2 Corinthians 1.8, We do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. Asia. We were so utterly burdened beyond strength that we despaired of life itself. Sounds like uh, a little bit suicidal. So many characters in the Bible. Job, Jonah, Sarah, Rachel, men, women, all kinds of people. Most of all, Jesus our Lord. Isaiah 53 verse 3 says that even one of his names, the names of Jesus, is man of sorrows. One of his names. When his friend Lazarus died, Jesus wept. John 11 35, it's two words, shortest verse in the Bible. You can all memorize it. Jesus wept. Um, on the night of Jesus' betrayal and, and arrest, um, he was, before it happened, he was in the garden praying, and he said to his disciples, my soul is very sorrowful, even to the point of death. And, and then he became so distressed and, and depressed that he began to sweat drops of blood. It's a medical condition called hematidosis. Do you get the picture? Depression is not a sin. It's actually very, very, very common. It's normal. It happens. There are many, many godly people who have suffered from depression. One of the best and well-known cases in Christian history is from Charles Spurgeon. <laughs> they called him the, the prince of preachers, a great orator, a great pastor. He was actually a pastor of, of really the first modern-day megachurch. Um, it, there's actually a book out on it you can check out if you're interested. Spurgeon's Sorrows, Realistic Hope for Those Who Suffer from Depression. Here's one of the things that Spurgeon said. The mind can descend far lower than the body, for in it there are bottomless pits. The flesh can bear only a certain number of wounds and no more, but the soul can bleed in 10,000 ways and die over and over again each hour. Um, all four of your pastors here at our church have suffered from depression in varying degrees at various stages of our life. Um, we've not only had to deal with major things that have happened in our own life, like Pastor James' brother being shot in the back last year while on duty from one of his fellow officers in a fit of rage. But not only those things, but we've We've carried multiple situations in our church where, where a spouse has slept with another person and walked through couples and divorce, car accidents, hospitals, deaths. I mean, so many painful miscarriages. Some even just going full term. Deviant sex from pornography to People hooking up with other people in public restrooms. People that have been physically and sexually abused. People losing their jobs. Lies and gossip and strife with people. Having to mediate these things. They're burdens. 
They're burdens we bear and, and we share it. And, and it's part of our job and calling. Don't, don't hear me wrong. I'm not complaining about it today. It, it's, our, it's our joy to suffer with you and to minister to you in the darkest moments of our life. Not saying I don't want the job. That stuff takes its toll. Personally, in my life, um, I've had three major bouts of, with depression. One was in high school. Another was a, after the first year that we started this church 11 years ago. Um, and then once last year where it, I ended up taking a six-month sabbatical um, as a result. I've, I've shared some of the, the details before. I'm not going to walk through all that today. But, man, I started having intense panic attacks. Um, you know, I've been fits for extended period of time, just uncontrollably shaking and weeping, uh, became very numb and, and distant to everything that was happening around me. Um, I'm honest, in the darkest moment, suicidal ideation was not far from me. So, so, so hear me, I, I, I'm, stand, I'm not standing before you today looking and talking about this from some sort of outside perspective. I've been to the bottom. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. 